Welcome back to our exhibition games of Skate Around number five here in Namur, hosted by Namur Roller Derby. We have the pleasure with me, Dark Pistol. I'm going to be all by myself right now, but this is going to be great of having a men's roller derby game. We are going to have the Namur Glorious Bastards playing against Ghost Valley from Lausanne and Tenon les Bains. So both Switzerland and France are represented here. Um, I'll give you the rosters as soon as I can, but we're going to go straight into playing derby in um, somewhere around, you know, 42, 41 seconds. Um, <clears throat> Uh, very exciting. It's wonderful to be able to have these nice tournaments where we have some extra time where we can allow absolutely more derby to go on. So now we've got the first jam going. Goofy for Ghost Valley has gotten out first and is now lead jammer, while Blitz for the Namur Glorious Bastards is coming out right behind. Uh, you see the Spaniard and Paquito lining up, trying to set up some good offense, getting Goofy through so that they can call it off as they do and score all the points. So that would be 4-0 uh, Ghost Valley to Namur. And I'm going to try and make sure that I'm not silent because unfortunately I don't have a partner here to fill up the little silences that I have. So we're back, we're doing a pivot line start, quite old school, nice to see. Um, uh, the uh, pivot for Ghost Valley, Fraca, is even doing a bit of a, a lunge to make sure that everybody has to line up behind their legs while, um, uh, behind their hips, sorry, uh, while we have uh, Laurent for the Namur Glorious Bastards, who is also pivot, who is also holding that line. Since we're in an official timeout, I'm going to go ahead and try and show you the rosters here today. So for our um, Namur Roller Derby, we have Buzz Fighter, Orvalala, um, who is Laurent. I shouldn't have called them by their first name. That's not for you to know. Um, vintage, Laurent Roule, Mr. Odin, Monsieur Odin, who was uh, one of the announcers for today. Cuddy Shark, Bambi, Wachu Pichu, Dawal, Human Fly, Blitz, Zwiffy, and Loka Nurse. So here we go for jam number two. We have Bombi for Namur Roller Derby against uh, Kaka Walt for Ghost Valley. Uh, both of them pushing through the line. You see two really strong tripods really holding everybody back while uh, Cuddy Shark comes out the front unfortunately did something naughty, maybe something like a cut, it has to go to the box. Number 537, Laurel, who is also a player for Namur Roller Derby, was up at front trying to hold them back. Unfortunately, they do get through. Unfortunately for Namur, huh? but fortunately for Ghost Valley and fortunately for Kaka Waltz. And Kaka Waltz not only gets through for their scoring pass, but also gets a forearm for their trouble. So they will go to the box. Whatever points they had will be held in the pocket of the Jammer Ref, uh, while our Bombi from Namur Glorious Bastards, NGB as I will call them, starts to fight through. Now we have Cuddy Shark who is going to come in and try and do some offense for their Jammer. We have another um, another penalty being called on number 1-4 for Ghost Valley. Bombi takes their helmet cover off. It looks like they're uh, trying to go for a star pass, which they succeed in doing and actually um, are hit, they're unfortunately hit out by a very, very strong hit at the front by number 117 Dimitru. <laughs> that is really funny. I'm not going to tell you what it means if you don't know what it means, but it's, um, it's, it's hilarious. All right, and uh, it's also, it's hilarious and it's also inappropriate. So it, it, something can be two things at the same time, just so that you know. Um, unfortunately, Cuddy Shark, after taking the star, had to go back to uh, the penalty box, but an, um, it looks like that was a no pass, no penalty, and not a cut. So they're going to come out of the penalty box because it was not an actual penalty, while Kaka Wout continues to score. This jam is going a bit long, and now it looks like 8051 Cuddy Shark, who was the pivot turn jammer, did indeed do something naughty and will now be going to the box for their troubles. Uh, not sure whether or not they are going as a jammer. No, it does look like they are indeed going as a jammer, so they will hand off at their pivot 
um, marker to their bench and sit down in the box as a jammer. That means this is a power jam for Ghost Valley Roller Derby. Ghost Roller, Roller, Roller Derby, who scored six points on that last jam, making it 10 to zero. We have Monsieur Audin holding the tripod at the front for Namur GB. And um, a number four, uh, Sly Dog for Ghost Valley Roller Derby, who is able to actually push through the inside, do a little spin, and get lead jammer. Now, this may be just a little bit more easy because there is a pack being made at the back, um, holding back Orvalala um, with Mirage, uh, just, just in case, and the Spaniard. Monsieur Oda comes back to try and maybe do a little bit more uh, offense since Cuddy Shark will be coming back onto the track. And number four, Sly Dog makes their way into the back of that NGB wall. Long Roule hits them out and recycles them back. So Cuddy Shark, uh, I'm sorry about that. So um, number four, uh, Sly Dog decides to go ahead and call it off, but not, after, not before they have also scored another six points. So that's 16 to zero. It looks like Ghost Valley Roller Derby is going, getting off to a pretty strong start. We're doing another um, pivot line start. So a pivot line start is at the um, front of that uh, first starting zone. Um, and uh, so they all are bunched up at the front. And it looks like we've got a bit of a 2-2 two -two situation with NGB getting a three wall up at the front. Human Fly, or Tse as we call him, is up at the front as well, tries to hit out number eight, nine. Um, and uh, when, and the thing is, is that uh, they go out of bounds, but unfortunately, Goofy, the um, Ghost Valley Roller Derby uh, jammer, did get a cut penalty. And I don't know when that was, but it wasn't exactly at the same time. So you can tell that. But so that means that the lead is still open. And number 555 Blitz, or 556 Blitz, is now lead jammer as they have been able to push through the pack, get out, and um, receive that status. They have come back around there and now in, in a point scoring position where um, we see a lot of movement up front. You can see the uh, Ghost Valley Roller Derby wall is a good tripod that's um, circulating well. We have an extra blocker who is coming in to do a bit of offense, uh, which um, for Goofy would have been nice, uh, but it didn't actually create uh, what was needed. And that means uh, that the offense um, they did it a little bit in a uh, non-derby direction. And because of that, number 117, Dimitri, will be going to the penalty box. They will be going to the Zonzon, as it's called. I just really like that derby name, and I think it's really fun. But it's important to note that NGB has now made it onto the board and with four points. So it's now 16 to 4. Let's see if NGB can take advantage of that momentum and really get going here. Um, it looks like the defense that they're holding at the at the front is working well for them. Number 777, it, um, uh, Zwifty is doing a really good job of uh, holding back uh, the opposing jammer Kekawest until of course Kekawest is able to do a bit of juking and get to the outside, also taking advantage of a bit of offense. So number nine, five Bambi comes out, not lead jammer, but does get through as number nine, 9-1, Loka, uh, does a bit of blocking at the front. Their wall is not together, but it looks like we only have two of each team. So we have a real micro pack going on. Everybody has to remain together, remain calm. Mirage doing some excellent blocking at the back. Bambi unable to get through. Now we've got a two wall by Mirage and Dimitri. Bambi still fighting their way through as they're getting offense from number 2-9 of NGB, which is the wall. Now we have Kakawal coming back in for their scoring pass. Uh, Human Fly is able to hit them out and recycles them backwards. While Paco also goes backwards, kind of creating a bridge. Uh, Paquito, sorry, not Paco. But um, yeah, it doesn't matter. They all, both skated out of play. Uh, Kakawal, in the meantime, uh, fighting their way back up to the front, scoring some points and calling it off. Um, it looks like we have another jam where there were zero points scored by Namur, Namur Roller Derby and Ghost Valley was able to score 11. No, I'm sorry about that. It looked like there were three points. Those points came up a little bit later. The uh, jam ref probably had to verify with the outside. Um, uh, also, at the end of that jam, Bombi went to the uh, penalty box. So they will be sitting for 30 seconds while 
um, the Ghost Valley Roller Derby will be able to enjoy 30 seconds of a power jam. Monsieur Audin doing some blocking of the jammer. Sly Dog, oh, while the tripod at the front was unable to move um, in into position before Sly Dog got through on the outside. Let's look for another offense. We have counter offense by Monsieur Audin. Also doing, uh, again, defense against Sly Dog, and now the wall is well prepared. Orban number 1337 hitting the jammer out on the outside. Sly Dog coming back in. There's a bit of backwards motion. Um, it looks like they're set up, ready for when that jammer is back up and back in play. Uh, they're trying to get through on the out inside using a fracas number eight as their offense, trying to tiptoe through Orvalala, doing some one-on-one -on -one blocking in the back. Uh, number zero seven, Machu Picchu, was unable to um, get to the jammer on the outside, and so they do get through for a scoring pass. Meanwhile, we do have Bombi, who has come back in from the box and um, has been hit out, did not make their initial pass. Number There was a lot of whistling. Number one, four, Barbarbi uh, maybe looking around and Bombi looking around to make sure that neither of them had done something naughty and had to go to the box. Right now we've got NGB and uh, Ghost Valley Roller Derby lining up. Uh, uh, NGB is lining up with only two blockers. So uh, they are really in a bit of a an under... An, uh, they're outnumbered at this point, but still, um, Lorul doing a great job, giving a good hit to Goofy, but Goofy being the agile jammer that he is, is able to jump over on his toe stops, get through, get lead jammer. Blitz does um, a, a bit of fancy footwork, uh, juking all the way, and gets through just behind them. Goofy scores the points that he can, calls it off immediately, preventing Blitz from making any points. There we have another um, zero for Namur Roller Derby, but Ghost Valley Roller Derby is able to get two points for their troubles. Sorry about that. I just had to drink something. All right, so i um, just wondering uh, if there's anybody interacting with the feed right now. Very cool tournament. Love the live stream and the commenting. Uh, it looks like that was probably from before, but don't hesitate while you're on the stream to interact with us. If you're watching, go ahead and give a shout out to your favorite players, such as perhaps uh, Keke Walta, who has now gotten through for lead jam and is coming around for a scoring pass, being blocked by DeWall, number 29. Gets through, gets all the points. So while Human Fly is jamming, trying to make it through on their initial pass, we have uh, Machu Picchu doing some offense for their jammer, hitting um, and uh, driving really well. Number 117 Dimitru out of the way. Uh, on a couple more offensive moves, uh, and the Human Fly is out and able to score points, but Geke Welt wants none of that and has therefore decided to call it off. Uh, Goes Valley Roller Derby does have one skater in the box. Uh, NGB is going to be in the um, superior position in terms of numbers at the beginning of this jam. The score is now 41 to 7 for Ghost Valley Roller Derby. Men's Roller Derby uh, games often go quite fast. You've got to pay attention to what's going on because the scores can go up really quickly. So you also have to watch. It can, you know, things can change on a dime. As with any roller derby game, we see some pretty big offense being played there by Cuddy Shark trying to get their jammer Bombi out. Uh, we have Sly Dog uh, fighting through the front, getting through, uh, earning lead while Orla Hala decides to try and chase, maybe to see if they can get them out and maybe re-absorb uh, them into the pack. Uh, Star Pass is performed and Cuddy Shark blasts their way through the front. Uh, now we have a Sly Dog who is back in, scoring all of the points, decides to call it off. So uh, again, the derby is really fast. Everybody is... Um, Pretty clean so far. We've seen a couple of penalty spirals, but not a big deal. It looks like um, what's mainly happening is we see the walls. They're constantly changing position and changing position. Uh, they like I see on both sides uh, that we like to try and do offense and defense at the same time. 
Um, a lot of these skaters know each other, so uh, they're also uh, giving each other props, having a good time. We've got Monsieur Audin at the front doing uh, offense uh, for uh, his jammer blitz, number 556, five, and coming around to do defense against Goofy, number 89. Number 210 also goes back to try and do a bit of defense and now is, is back into their offensive position while Goofy is already coming around for their scoring pass. Monsieur Audin hitting them on the outside, but they are able Able to stay in number five five six blitz pushing at the back is able to get through and finally has their initial pass there was a no pass no penalty so that means goofy only got three points is asking for offense from his team so that he can get as many points as possible and then call it which is exactly what he does so and for that trouble is able to earn uh, to sneak in uh i think that's two more points yep two points so there we go. We also now have a new jammer lining up on the jammer line for NGB. That's going to be Machu Picchu. And we still have Keke Welt for um, Ghost Valley, who is on the line uh, as their jammer, one of their main jammers. They're mainly running two jammers. Oh, la la la. Uh, it's oh la la. Doing some really good defense on the inside against Kakia Walto while we have uh, um, Machu Picchu fighting their way through being uh, slammed down a bit by Kakia Walto. And yeah, it seems uh, that the uh, jammer referee felt that that was actually a forearm penalty against the NGB jammer. Human Fly pushing Machu Picchu into another player to try and do offense from behind, which is quite interesting. Machu Picchu continuing to fight their way forward and able to get through uh, Faka and get lead jammer. So Machu Picchu gets um, one of the rare leads uh, for uh, NGB coming in through the back, waiting for their offense. They're up against uh, Mirage, uh, number 00. zero. DeWall does offense, trying to get them out of the way. Number nine, uh, number eight, seven, 857 for the Spaniard, hitting Machu Picchu out at the outside and actually um, drawing a cut penalty on Machu Picchu. So they will go to the box while Kekia Welt has already come out of the box and is now through on their initial pass because that was their initial pass. They will start to their scoring pass on a power jam. Um, it looks like they're going to hit the wall first, wait for their offense to come in second. Um, they're fighting their way through on the other side. The, the wall, number two, nine, believed that they had uh, hit Kekia Welt all, out, but you got to be careful. That that might not necessarily be the case. You've got to really watch those jammers' feet because they can be quite sneaky. So we are setting back up with Orvalala and um, De Wall in the in the front trying to uh, set up some good defense. Orvalala in front of the jammer, not sure if they were really aware of that. And then we have the human fly, number 3-3, three, three, who is the pivot, who is eventually able to hit out and recycle Kaka Welt. In the meantime, we've had Machu Picchu serve. They're 30 seconds in the box, and they are coming back onto the track to try and score some points because they were on a scoring pass, and they do indeed earn two points while uh, Ghost Valley Roller Derby was able to rack up eight points even though they wa they were um, in the box for 30 seconds. That being said, they also had a 30 second power jam uh, for them, so that also helps them get a few more points. This is really um, interesting derby. Always love to watch uh, MRDA derby, and I'm not saying that this is necessarily an MRDA sanctioned game, but is being played with MRDA rules, which are also WFTDA rules. And what that gives us is, um, yeah, a, a really fun game with um, basically a co-ed type of mix. Uh, and um, what happens right there is Ghost Valley Roller Derby's uh, jammer, Sly Dog, actually came out and did not get lead, was um, sent to the box, I think, for a forearm penalty. And um, so Bombi is trying to fight through the pack, follow their offense to eventually get a, a lead jammer. Um, we have another one of Ghost Valley Roller Derby's blockers, Bar Barbie, being sent to the penalty box. And we have Monsieur Audin and the Human Fly forming a two wall at the, black, at the back, while Cuddy Shark and number 777 Swiffy try to to do offense at the front. Um, unfortunately, what also happened is there was a multiplayer plus an extra um, insubordination penalty that was called for Sly Dog number four. So they will spend an entire minute in the penalty box. So let's see what 
NGB decides to do in order to take advantage of this very long power jam. Now we do have at least one of their blockers going to the box. We also have another one of um, the uh, Ghost Valley Roller Derby's blockers going to the boxes. So um, again, there's a situation where they both have three blockers on the track, so there's not a lot of time, but, uh, and they did call it, and I'm hoping they called it because yes, it looks like Barbie did pick up three points. That's a three to zero jam. As I've told you before, it's always best to try and get out of there with the other team score zero points and you score some points because this is the way you rack them up over and over, especially if you can do that several jams in a row. So in this particular case, it looks like they've gotten a little momentum and they're also deciding to start on a power jam. So Ghost Valley Roller Derby putting themselves in a power block situation for defense in the front with a tripod. Blitz being one of the stronger jammers for NGB. Pushing themselves through the inside and earning a lead jammer. And now they're coming around fast. Um, we have Ghost Valley Roller Derby that's kind of racing to the front. There's no offense that's necessarily being sent in yet. First Blitz is being allowed to co-work that wall, see if they can get something out. And then number 9-1 goes in to do some offense. There is a cut penalty that was called, I believe, on one of the blockers, so that would be number eight, while Blitz continues to try and come in. But here comes number four Slide Dog into the back of that Strong tripod, strong, but moving around quite a bit, which actually means that the uh, middle of that tripod was a bit open. So they do then earn, number four does then earn uh, her initial pass through the middle. And so again, in order to make sure that you maintain your rhythm, to maintain what you've been winning so far, and uh, Blitz has been winning that jam by scoring four points and keeping the opposing jammer to zero. Now, as you can see, there is a little bit of discussion in the center of the track. Skaters are allowed to go and ask um, uh, the referee's uh, reasoning for a call that they had against them. It's, you know, it's not an argument necessarily. They just want to know uh, more information. And of course, you know, sometimes we don't understand why we got a penalty or uh, what we did wrong, and we want to make sure that we don't do it again. Uh, so we'll often, uh, you know, I assume with that. Um, insubordination penalty. An insubordination penalty just means maybe uh, the referee thought you were arguing with them when you got the penalty, or if you didn't exit the track appropriately, that can also be insubordination. Insubordination can be a lot of things. And so um, it's not necessarily uh, that you were, you know, cussing at somebody or that you're a bad sports person. In, um, in this case, it, it probably wasn't the case. It was just, a, you know, not listening or not hearing or not understanding. And so they just went into the middle of the track to ask a bit more information and see why. Um, so and we were, we were looking before, I was able to show you the roster for um, uh, Namur Roller Derby. Now let's look at Ghost Valley, Valley Roller Derby. You've got Mirage, Dimitru, again, it's gonna make me giggle every time. Fraca, The Spaniard, Goofy, Little Helper, Barbarbi, Sly Dog, Fraca, Cacahuat, and Paquito. It looks like we're gonna get back to Derby. We are NGB, it looks like what they're doing is they're letting everybody on their team jam, which is tons of fun. That means that we're just really out there to have fun, let everybody get a great experience. So we have Cuddy Shark lined up as Jammer getting through on the outside line as if there was no problem, followed by Goofy number eight, nine from Ghost Valley Roller Derby, hot on his heels. Uh, the two of them are racing into the track. I'm sure that um, NGB is trying to race forward as much as they can because it's very important to try and get their blockers out of the box. Goofy is starting to play some defense against Cuddy Shark because it would be a great way to be able to absorb Cuddy Shark into the pack. Now Goofy is trying to get out and get points because they're both scoring points, but Cuddy Shark is lead jammer, if I understand correctly. Yes, there is the pointing hand. Now four points were awarded for Cuddy Shark. Goofy is still coming around, still the ability to earn points. It looks like they're going to try, but Cuddy Shark isn't going to let them. All of their blockers, mm, no, not all of their blockers, but most of their blockers came out of the box. So Cuddy Shark decides to call it while they're ahead. They have four points for NGB. Ghost Valley Roller Derby also earned four points. As I told you, they both got through with that scoring pass. But I believe part of it was to make sure that they could get as many people out of the box as possible. Monsieur Odin is in the box for NGB. Currently, Ghost Valley Roller Derby has everybody on the pack. Uh, on the track, so that's good. 
<laughs> that's on the track and in the pack as well. Now, these are two small teams, as you can see. So you're going to see the same players over and over. I'm going to, you know, uh, talk to them, uh, talk to you about them as much as possible, but probably not um, uh, not necessarily necessary. You're going to get to know them very quickly. Uh, so here we've got um, DeWall. Uh, we've got 000, uh, Be uh, sorry, 000 Buzz Fighter for Namur and 537 Lanroule, uh, who are set up for a nice three wall, trying to catch the jammer Kaka Walt, uh, while Mirage uh, does some passive offense, but it was almost uh, perfectly effective. Now they're hitting out the jammer, Lanroule goes back, and Kaka Walt didn't see the recycling by Lanroule, and therefore earns themselves a cut penalty. So then we have Bombi, who, um, since there was no lead, uh, declared in a position to be able to earn lead. Uh, Bombi fighting against a very strong collective of um, uh, Ghost Valley Roller Derby that, you know, doesn't seem to need to be together in a wall. Uh, they can just be two of them, and that seems to be quite enough. Um, but Bombi still fighting their way through. Uh, they look to me to be a younger skater, so uh, maybe they could take the punishment. We've also got a pack being made in the back by taking just in case number 222 as a, a goat. Uh, love us some goats. Uh, and then, then number 29 DeWall goes straight into a defensive position against Kakia Welt. Uh, so it looks like NGB is really starting to get into their groove and are able to, you know, perform some really good defense while uh, Bombi is still trying to fight their way through. Bombi is now being recycled by the Spaniard coming back into the back of a Ghost Valley Roller Derby while Kaka Welt has taken off uh, their helmet cover, has made it back through the pack, and, and they are not lead again because they came out of the... Um, they came out of the box, and uh, Bombi did indeed earn lead, apparently, and was back for their scoring pass, so they earned two points. Um, I don't know how I missed that, but, you know, things happen because I'm trying to look at everybody. Um, but, uh, unfortunately, Monsieur Oda, number 666, has gone back to the box, so they're going to spend this intergym, uh, they're going to spend this intergym in there, so that means uh, they're giving somebody else a break who's on the NGB bench. Um, uh, but, so that means we also have the human fly, and Machu Pichu who are up in a wall and uh, Sly Dog coming out on the outside. Uh, Blitz uh, pushing through, trying to get through that really heady and, and very um, rock solid Ghost Valley Roller Derby wall. Um, good rotation, everything going, going actually quite well for the formation of that wall. So Blitz is really going to need some offense if he's going to get through. In the meantime, Sly Dog has been able to come around for a scoring pass and is back for another scoring pass. So they're going to have to abandon offense. NGB is going to have to do their best at, at, at defense and, and uh, make sure that they're doing what's necessary. Number 666, Monsieur Odin is doing their utmost to try and get their jammer out and play by playing that kind of rough offense was actually able to do so number five five six splits is coming around for their scoring pass as well um, Sly Dog has decided that uh, you know they're not going to call it so Blitz is able to get points um, actually all of the points Sly Dog as well now Sly Dog has two scoring passes above uh, blitzes, so they're raising their hands in the air. Not like they just don't care, but actually like they do care. They do care about whether or not blitz scores anymore, so they're going to call the jam off. That jam was Ghost Valley Roller Derby 12 points, Demi Roller Derby 4 for a 74-26 score on that jam number 16. I can't believe we're already at five minutes until halftime. I think it's probably because I am announcing this game by myself that it just don't seem the time go by. We're five seconds. Pussy is letting us know what's going on. We have number 857 for the Spaniard holding their wall, his wall together, making sure that the, the jammer now, who is Cuddy Shark, is not able to get through. But it looks like Cuddy Shark is really good on that inside line. Number 8051 has gotten themselves lead. And um, uh, Goofy has earned a penalty. So Goofy will be sitting in the box, and it looks like Cuddy Shark and all of the NGB skaters are trying to make sure they earn all the points that they can, really take advantage of this. Ghost Valley Roller Derby, 
Mirage, particularly, number 00, zero a very punchy player, trying to make sure uh, that they recycle the best that they can. Um, I heard a whistle, so I was wondering if uh, the Spaniard and Mirage had actually been able to draw a cut on Cutty Shark, but it doesn't look to be the case. So uh, Cutty Shark is getting hit out by uh, Paquito by the Spaniard. Uh, we've got Justin Case in there. I mean, they're really giving them the business. Meanwhile, Goofy has gotten back on the track and done at least one scoring pass. Looks like they're coming back for their second scoring pass. And I, I understand that Cuddy Shark maybe wants to call it. He's already earned all of his points on that particular pass. Um, probably not happy about letting Goofy score, but probably didn't see him coming because quite honestly, I didn't either. He was too fast. He's just an incredibly fast and, and very explosive skater and always has been. He's a, a player for Team Italy. He has uh, played for the Mankin Beast at all the highest levels. So he's played for uh, the, the e MEC, so the Men's European Cup, I believe uh, at least twice, maybe three times. Um, so really high level skater. Uh, we've got our next jam coming up with Kekia Welt giving a really big Welt to number 3210 um, for uh, Namur roller, roller Derby. That would be vintage. And um, vintage, uh, I've gotten to talk to a lot this weekend. I think both of us are quite vintage, as a matter of fact. But I really love that derby name. I, I actually couldn't love it more. All right, so now we have um, uh, Bambi, ha who has completed a star pass to uh, Orvalala who is the pivot for NG uh, NGB, is trying to fight his way through to try and make the, the most of it because when you're the pivot and you get the star, the first thing you want to make sure you do is that you get that star out of the back. So now we've got the NGB's defense doing a really great job putting themselves in harm's way to try and keep Kekia Welt to the back while their NGB pivot is pushing and pushing and trying their best to get through. Uh, it looks like we have low roule on the ground, uh, so we have to make sure that they get back up. Okay, they seem fine, so everybody's uh, back in position. We're back into um, defense, and um, yeah, be very careful. Even when you try and push on the outside line, Gekka Welt is really good on those toe stops, and it is able to tiptoe around on the outside and earn more points. So Ghost Valley Roller Derby has got seven points for that gym. Namir Roller Derby only has, uh, only has zero. Yeah, only. It's a big goose egg, you know. But they are fighting really hard, and it seems like they're really getting into the rhythm. They're seeing that Cuddy Shark and... Um, Blitz are actually some really good jammers. Actually, Machu Picchu also had a successful jam. Um, so even though the score, again, is 85 to 30, so that's a 55 point difference, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, a lot because things could change quite quickly, especially if you think about penalties. So um, yeah, it just in these 30 seconds, I'd like to look at these penalties. So we already have a foul out for the human fly for Namur Roller Derby. Uh, that's unfortunate, but everybody else seems to be good in terms of penalties. Now we've got Sly Dog for Ghost Valley Roller Derby pushing her way to the front. I'm trying to make sure that I uh, stay up with their pronouns because most of them do have um, a gendered pronoun, so I'm very sorry if I use a non-gendered pronoun, but it's because it's um, just me trying to make sure that I use the right ones. Uh, but Blitz has gotten out very quickly, is coming, and we see a Sly Dog coming through, jumping over Swiffy, earning all four points, and then calling it before Blitz gets in. What's really nice is to see all the laughing and the camaraderie between the skaters on both teams because, you know, they all know each other. Um, there are some former Mankin Beasts on um, Namu Roller Derby. Um, there are some former Mankin Beasts on Ghost Valley Roller Derby. Um, they have all played probably for other teams. National teams have played against each other, so they know each other really well. Men's Roller Derby is quite small. Here comes Cuddy Shark on the inside trying to push his way through. Uh, we have Goofy who has also earned another cut. Cuddy Shark pushing their way through at the front, earning lead. So um, uh, number 537, Lonrou goes to the box. So that means we've got three on three. Oh, three on four. I'm so sorry about that, but it doesn't matter because Cuddy Shark is 
Cuddy Shark may be a bit vintage, uh, just like vintage and just like me, but Cuddy Shark is quite big and quite powerful and able to take on uh, any wall. So it looks like they need to make sure that they're well in position before Cuddy Shark makes it through. And it doesn't look like we're going to do any offense because the defense is set up to make sure that they can prevent that fast and slippery Goofy from getting through, and they can't do that either. But you know what? Cuddy Shark has earned the points for this jam, so Cuddy Shark is going to go ahead and call it off, and that's going to be the end of the half. People, that was super fast, super fun. Um, I hope that you really liked it. Yeah, and uh, I'm announcing this game by myself. I'm talking a lot. I put my uh, brain just, you know, on mechanical mode, so I haven't been able to really uh, see what you were saying so i want to go and see if there was anything that you said and you did you I, I have watching and loving your commentary don't forget to breathe you're so sweet i don't have time to breathe bambi is a new skater he was a fresh meat and he's son of the ngb lineup well i mean you know and, and that's great new skaters are wonderful we want them to be coming in all of the time because the only way a league and roller derby can live is if we have new skaters coming in so um, I've really enjoyed commenting this, uh, this first half. We're going to come back for the second half. I'm going to drink some water and um, try and inhale and exhale as often as possible so that I can get uh, a little bit more oxygen into my blood. So um, come back. Don't miss out because this has been really fun. See you soon. I'm ready to go for our second half of the uh, exhibition game between Namur, Glorious Masters, and Ghost Valley Roller Derby. The score is right now 89 to 35. Namur was able to score five points on that last jam before the half. So um, hopefully that's going to give them a little bit of momentum. As I said, it's not really a big score differential, so um, it... it, it could change at any time. We did already have a foul out on uh, the NGB side, so Human Fly is now um, encouraging his team from the stands. Um, I want to thank you for the love that I got um, from the uh, from the stream because honestly, I need it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started with Blitz jamming for NGB and Goofy jamming for uh, Ghost Valley. Two a very um, accomplished jammers for both teams. Goofy just doing a sort of a um, hopscotch over number 91, Loka Nurse, uh, to get through and earn lead jammer. Now Mirage is going to the box, but Goofy is um, sort of snaking his way through the uh, opposing skaters to earn points. We'll see how many of those he's earned because he does decide to call it before Blitz makes it back through for their scoring pa for his scoring pass. Um, so it looks like uh, Goofy was only able to score one point, but 1-0 is still one more than the other team. Uh, we currently have uh, one uh, Ghost Valley Roller Derby skater in the box, and we also have the officials kind of doing some um, conversation. Yep, yeah, that's because one of the NGB skaters, Laurent Roule, also needed to go to the box. So now we currently have Bombi and Kakawelt who are fighting through these uh, two walls. Kakawelt makes it through as lead jammer, while Bombi is still struggling at the back, uh, trying to get through that very strong tripod. Um, the tripods are a little loose than you may be used to seeing, but that's just because um, they are very good one-on-one -on -one skaters here, and so they don't feel the need to necessarily hold on to their friends all the time. 9-5 Bambi is able to get out on the outside and is going back for their scoring pass, but this is Kekia Welt's second scoring pass. They make it through for all the points, call the jam off before Bambi can make it to make even one. So that's an 8-0 jam for Ghost Valley Roller Derby. So we're starting off fast and hard. Um, uh, uh, we've got, uh, you know, a f two blockers from NGB who are sitting in the box, uh, DeWall and Vintage. Um, so Orval Hala and um, Monsieur Audin. So, you know, everything we need from Norse Smith is on the line for... Um, 
for NGB. They were able to hit uh, Sly Dog to the ground, but not actually out. And so they started to recycle before that skater was actually out. Cuddy Shark started to make their way through and looked like they might actually be able to get on their initial, but something happened that caused them to do something naughty, and that naughtiness has put them in the box. We have the two NGB skaters that were previously, for the previous jam in the box now standing, but that means that NGB is going to have to be, uh, again, two skaters down when they come back for the next jam. Since I have a little bit of time, I do want to make sure that we thank our sponsors, okay? We got a grant from Wallonie Infrastructure and La Région Wallonne. The uh, Tabora Hall, which we are in for the first time, a skate around hosted by Namur Roller Derby, is actually in Namur, in the city of Namur. All right, so um, that is uh, being donated by the Ville de Namur. And we also have a sponsor for bandages and medical equipment, and their name is Calias. We'd like to thank them for their support. Um, but without them, we couldn't have this excellent hall. We wouldn't be able to have these excellent roller derby games, and we wouldn't be able to bring you this excellent stream without derby live stream. Make sure if you're watching it on the stream that you like, you subscribe, you send us little hearts. Make sure uh, make sure to send me little hearts. I'm all by myself, so I want to know that somebody's listening to me. And also make sure that you interact with us. Go ahead and send us a couple comments, and I'll read them out as soon as I have the time. So now we have Sly Dog, who is coming in on a power jam. Um, there are only two blockers uh, for NGB Blitz who is uh, normally a jammer who is play who is uh, in the pivot position. So we have a, little, a few suspicions as to why that may be, but they're also an excellent blocker. And so um, here's the thing is that uh, number 3210 Vintage is going to the box, but it is also being followed by a uh, Sly Dog. No, it isn't Sly Dog. Th it looks like Vintage may have done something bad. Um, and so uh, that is why uh, Sly Dog was being recycled around, but they were being recycled around because they had actually um, uh, been hit by a 3210. So they didn't do a penalty, but it looks like they may have um, had some sort of injury or something. So we're going to make sure that they get checked out. There are already medics over there on the Ghost Valley Roller Derby bench. Um, so that means uh, that if there is any medical attention that's needed, that's provided by the Red Cross, thankfully. They're excellent medics that keep us safe. Now we have an official timeout. I believe that official timeout is being taken probably to ensure that the safety of everyone has been taken care of. And it, once they have assured themselves of that, we can start our jam. All right, so we have four blockers for Ghost Valley Roller Derby and only three um, for uh, NGB, which means Mirage it was available to do some excellent offense, breaking the wall up and getting Goofy through straight through the middle. Um, Goofy is coming around for their scoring pass. As I said, this is a... Um, this is a, a Bambi who is currently coming around for their initial pass. They get a no pass, no penalty as Mirage hit them out, but also went out at the same time. So they do get their initial pass, but Goofy goes ahead and scores points and decides to call it off. It was some really good offense and some really good what we call a free uh, electron um, derby playing by Mirage. Mirage... Uh, skater for Team France, um, one of my former players for the Panam squad that I used to coach. So um, uh, also somebody that I know really well, used to be a jammer, now an excellent, excellent blocker. So now we, ha uh, again, have only two blockers from NGB on the track. That would be Lon Roule and uh, number 000 uh, Buzz Fighter. And uh, they do their best to do some uh, defense against Kakia Welt, but Kakia Welt able to get through not only for their initial pass, but again on the outside for their scoring pass while Blitz is fighting through a solid four wall. Okay, so that means that, that they have much fewer players and they're trying to do everything everywhere all at once. Uh, Blitz does finally make it through for their initial pass, and uh, they're right behind Keke Weld, so Keke Weld decides I'm going to call it off because I've already scored eight points. I don't need to do anything else. I'm good with that. And they certainly should be because it's 114 to 35. Ghost Valley Roller Derby is on top right now. 
Um, there's a question on this stream. What is the biggest difference between roller derby and men's roller derby? I feel. Oh, I don't know. I think there are so many similarities. Um, there, are, I think the biggest difference is that you have a mixed team. Um, I think also one of the other differences is that uh, we. Yeah, I mean, I think that that, that we have a lot more one-on-one -on -one playing. Uh, you see, there there that people are, are a little bit more in an explosive strength instead of that endurance strength. So um, I, that makes it a lot of fun. And uh, I think that one of the differences I'm seeing right now with Goofy from Team Italy, from, uh, you know, uh, Manken Beast, one of these really great skaters that is able to basically just throw their body around so like it doesn't matter and they'll never get hurt and I think that that might be some sort of like mental difference um, of course we've also seen uh, WFTA skaters throw their body around like uh, they can't get hurt um, I, I don't do that because I definitely can get hurt <laughs> so Goofy was able to get through uh, lead jammer and score points then called it right off and now we're on to our um, jam number eight where we have uh, Bambi for an NGB as well as um, Sl uh, Sly Dog coming in for Ghost Valley Roller Derby. Now it looks like the NGB line with Lon Roule and Loca Nurse and Orvalhalla are doing a really good job of set, setting up what I would call more of that endurance solid tripod, trying to make, their, make sure that they're always together, kind of gluey and stick on the jammer. Um, and in order, in order to do that, that means that you have to be able to reform and always stay together. It, we can see Machu Picchu out there at the front trying to hit Sly Dog out. Um, is able to do so somewhat, but has to go to the box for their trouble because they did a forearm. And now we have Orvalhalla and Lonroule at the front with a very strong two wall, a uh, very endurant wall just um, based on their strength and trying to slow the game down, which is a good technique, you know, because this uh, derby game has been quite fast so far. Now, because um, uh, we can see that Sly Dog is in a um, was for 30 seconds held back long enough for Bombi to serve their entire penalty and then come back. Um, so we had Sly Dog come back in, um, uh, possibly earn some points. Um, it was quite a long jam though because uh, that defense for NGB um, you know, was able to hold Sly Dog back a little bit longer than they had uh, been able to before. And this may be a technique that they want to employ. Perhaps, uh, you know, everything that they should be doing right now should be about slowing down Ghost Valley Roller Derby, you know. And we see this also in WFTDA teams uh, where you've got a slower team and a faster team. And sometimes that can be quite annoying for the slower team. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just about playing your own game. Now, Blitz for NGB and Kakia Walta for Ghost Valley Roller Derby. Ghost Valley Roller Derby um, gets out and is actually not lead jammer because Blitz had already earned um, a lead jammer but then was sucked back into the back. So now we have Kakia Walt coming through for a scoring pass where Blitz is behind him also coming through for a scoring pass. I believe that Blitz would like to be able to score points since Kakia Walt scored all of them. Um, Mirage, or Mimi as we call him, has been able to um, pull Blitz back and I think that, you know, for his trouble has decided he wants to call it because he doesn't want to let Kekia Wealth continue to go around and round and score so many points. So that means that Blitz scores one point for this jam and Ghost Valley Roller Derby scores six. Ooh, nice, we have Roy on the stream. Hi, Roy. So nice to see that you're there. Hello from Sweden. Miss Roy. Roy is also a uh, Team Belgium player, a Menken Beast player, and uh, is now up in Sweden uh, having that sweet Swedish life with the you know, their part with his partner and child and, and I don't know what else is going on in Roy's life. I'm sorry to give your, uh, to talk about your personal life on this stream. I just uh, can't stop talking because if I do, then I'll realize how tired I am. Can't be doing that. So we have a, a timeout called by NGB. I'm sure they would like to try and figure out 
uh, you know, what they're going to do from here on out. As I said, it could be a technique. I've seen this before where they maybe try to um, slow down the game. I'm going to see if I can't show you the penalties. We've already looked at the penalties for NGB a bit, but let's see the penalties over here for Ghost Valley Roller Derby. Actually quite clean if you consider this is the second half. They're not playing with a lot of skaters, so we only have one forearm for Mirage. Uh, it looks like Barbarbi has gotten, uh, you know, a nice little assortment and has the most penalties on his side. But everybody else, you know, two, three penalties. The Spaniard only has one direction penalty. Um, maybe something that is interesting, though, is to see those forearms and cutting penalties on both of their main jammers, Kekia Welt and Goofy. Something to think about because we don't like it when jammers go to the box. That uh, power jam situation is too much of an advantage to the other team. We have jam number 10 kicking off uh, with a Goofy coming out the front being um, blocked by Loka Nurse, but not long enough. While Cuddy Shark comes through the outside, holds on as hard as he can and is able to come out for his Initial pass, long roule at the back, uh, trying to uh, keep Goofy back. Goofy scores the points that he needs, decides to call it off when he's been hit to the ground. Cuddy Shark is unable to get any points. That is 3-0 on this jam. Don't forget to send me, send me little hearts if you like my commentary or if you just feel sorry for me or if you just think that, you know, Derby is great. I would love to see all sorts of interaction on this feed. Don't forget to subscribe to Derby Livestream because they provide this excellent streaming service for free for Namur. Now we've got Jam 11 kicking off with Bombi, who is a newer skater with NGB, and Sly Dog, Sly Dog making it through the inside with a beautiful little pirouette on one leg around Monsieur Audin. Bombi trying to make sure that they that he doesn't cut, that he doesn't do anything that you know the the skating officials wouldn't like. So the Spaniard hits him out on the outside, and Sly Dog comes through for their first scoring pass. They're on their second score pass now things are going quite quickly it doesn't look like the defense was ready to take them on number 777 Zwiffy may have uh, caught some friendly fire in the nose but you know things like that happen it's roller derby it's quite um quite physical and I I really like that so uh, here's some defense being played by uh, Monsieur Audin who decides to actually hit Mirage into his own jammer which hits the jammer out and then he's able to recycle them so that's really a, not a bad techni technique you know it's, it doesn't necessarily have to be you hitting the jammer you can hit somebody else into the jammer now Bombi is still really struggling has taken the um, helmet cover off um, but so far hasn't really tried to pass that on to a pivot. Now, as I'm looking, that may be because they forgot to align a pivot in that particular jam. So if you don't have a pivot and you take the star off, it makes it really hard for you to actually do a star pass. Now we have Monsieur Odin going to the box. Um, I'm going to look at the penalties uh, for Namur just because I think that, you know, we already lost one and no, it looks like everybody else is in good good position. We only lost the one skater. It looks like everybody else should be fine for now. All right, so we do have um, a uh, the end of the official timeout. We're going to five seconds. So we're on jam number 12. And here we go in the back. I can see Kekia Welt and I can see um, Blitz. Kekia Welt uses their own wall who was around the opposing wall to be able to tiptoe through the inside while Blitz is getting hit to the outside. There are, the, the Ghost Valley is already coming around for a scoring pass while Blitz is still struggling, struggling to get through. Um, here we see Loka Nurse coming around to the front to try and catch 888, but is unable to do so. Barbarbi is really uh, punishing uh, Blitz. Number 666, Monsieur Audin, um, decides to come in, hit Barbarbi out to make sure that Blitz can come back in. And both of them go down with quite a crash. Now, I don't know if that confusion, um, even though the two of them are not mad at each other at all, I mean, I, there's a lot of respect between them, but that allowed for Blitz to get out for their initial pass, therefore meaning the Kekia Weld has decided to call it off because they got the eight points that they needed for, from their two scoring passes. 
And if you have anything else to say to me on the screen, do not hesitate. I would love to see your comments, even if you know I only get an opportunity to read them every like um, five minutes or so. I'd still love to see them. We are on to jam number 13. Uh, jammer for N NGB is uh, Cuddy Shark, and I've got Goofy for Ghost Valley. Goofy coming out the front doing a bit of juking, making himself very useful also as a blocker for the oppo to, against the opposing jammer, Cuddy Shark, who come up come out at the same time. So since they were so close, Goofy decides, you know what, I'm going to call it off, and nobody gets any points. And that's also a tactic. I mean, I can see it. He was kind of smiling at Cuddy Shark. I think he understood that, you know, Cuddy Shark is also much, you know, bigger and stronger and probably didn't see any problem just railroading through Goofy. So Goofy was like, no, I think I'll, I'd rather just, you know, take all the points away from you because you did too good on this jam. I'm not going to allow you that. So we have um, nobody in the box for this jam, a full pack, which is very nice. That gives Bambi the opportunity to, to get out and get lead on the outside. That's a first lead for Bambi. We also have some pretty solid blocking against Sly Dog. Number one four um, is coming in for some offense. That's Bar Barbie. And also trying to give an arm whip to Sly Dog, which is a lot of fun, pretty old school. And actually, Sly Dog is, is, is actually laughing about it. And I don't blame her because it, it's it's quite fun to see that. It's not something that you get to do quite often. So Bar Barbie actually hits um, Bambi out. Bambi, who is in for their scoring, for his scoring pass, while we've got DeWall, Swiffy, and Monsieur Audin holding Sly Dog out at the front. Remember, Sly Dog is also coming in for their scoring pass. But Bambi is the lead uh, jammer here. So um, we've got DeWall who has been able to pull Sly Dog back. I've got a little bit of offense coming in from Fraca. And I've got Bambi who is still trying to see if they can score all of the points on this scoring pass. Sly Dog still being held quite well. Um, uh, and then we've got a, like a really big hit and a, a skater down on the track. So um, we're going to go back to, yeah, here we go. We have come away from the feed on the track because whenever one of our skaters goes down that's not something we necessarily want to look at um, because we want to give them their privacy. This is a, a really tough game. You can see that Namur is giving absolutely everything that they have. That last jam NGB was able to put together some really nice defensive strategies. What I liked was seeing them recycle around and around but always staying together and making sure that it stayed back. So they didn't go forward too much. You sh shoot out too much. You go forward too much, you recycle too fast to the front, and that just picks up the speed of the pack. So uh, they were really good about not doing that. Um, yeah, it's uh, I uh, thank you, Roy. Yeah, that'd be all for my personal life. No worries. I mean, I just needed to talk about something. Like I said, I can't stop talking, so I really am sorry about that. But yeah, I did hear that, Roy. Also, you play for DHR, um, the Germany, Denmark, Sweden team, and I heard that also the Human Fly does because they told me that earlier. Um, if you want to know where he is, he's going to be in the stands watching this game because within the first 20 minutes of this game, he did unfortunately foul out. Um, and if you'd like to look at the penalties, we'll go ahead and show them to you. I'm going to show you the penalties um, from uh, Namur Roller Derby. Namur uh, looks like uh, Wachu Pichu has um, six penalties, so definitely in the danger zone. The human fly has already fouled out. Everybody else looks to be in pretty good shape. I mean, I think four penalties is a lot, um, but it, you've still got, you know, we've only got 14 minutes of the game left. That's fine. And then let's go over to Ghost Valley to see how they're doing on penalties because from what I've seen, they haven't gone to the box as much. Um, that being said, I am over here looking at uh, the penalty box and it looks like we may have had an expulsion. Um, I'm hoping that I'll get a little bit more information about that. I won't be able to tell you, but it looks to me like um, uh, uh, Barbarbi or yeah, it looks to me like Barbarbi may have been 
may have been expelled. Now they're the captain, so it could be for some. It could be for some other reason. Uh, you never know. I mean, sometimes the captains have to take uh, take penalties for other players um, due to some sort of obscure rule. I don't know what it is. Ma, I'll try and get that information for you a bit later. Uh, in the meantime, we have Kakia Walt, who is really dancing the line, but getting hit out by Lo Roule, while um, Blitz is doing their best, uh, doing his utmost best to get through that three wall. Lo Roule, meanwhile, really sticking to Kakia Walt as much as uh, they can. And it is a, really an amazing job, especially when you consider uh, Lo Roule has been jamming for Namur Roller Derby for the past three games. I'm super impressed with you, Lo Roule. I am now um, a super derby fan. Uh, you are my new derby crush. Don't forget to try out for Team Belgium. Kekia, yeah, well, does make it through as lead jammer after quite a long time of getting, you know, hammered by Lonroule and uh, Lonroule's mastery of the wall. Now, we have um, some, uh, yeah, we have some uh, offense coming in. Unfortunately, 8574 uh, made a little bit of a movement with his hands. So the Spaniard will be going to the box because he did push somebody to the ground. I don't think it was intentional. It's just one of those things that when you're going through, you think everything's going to be fine. And then all, all of a sudden you're like, whoops. So we have Blitz coming through for a scoring pass, which is nice, even though Kekia Welt is the lead jammer. Um, the thing is, is that Namur is trying to do offense and defense. It didn't look like the switch was fast enough, but I, I can't say that because then we've got Lorou that comes around to the front and is able to buy a little bit more time so that Blitz can come back through and score some points. Now, we have one more scoring pass for Ghost Valley than we do for uh, Namur Roller Derby. So it looks like Kekia Weld is trying to empty the box. And in doing that, he's playing a little jammer. On, we get a little jammer on jammer action. Um, I get to take a few more seconds away from uh, the time uh, that uh, uh, Mimi is in the box. And uh, so that's good. Oh yeah, and Derby Livestream um, is uh, thanking the officials. I'd like to thank Derby Livestream and I'd like to thank our officials. We have Lula, Elbones, Bernard, Pussy Panzerfaust, Abracaflabra, Flabra, I cannot say that, Abracaflabra, blah, 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 blah. Don Panic, Eagle Eye Mary, Marcel Prost, Just Flemme, and Denial in our NSO and uh, non skating official positions. Uh, now, 8051, that's Cuddy Shark, has been awarded lead after some pretty amazing footwork um, that I don't think they knew they knew how to do that. I think their body did it without their brain knowing. And so they get through on a scoring pass. They scored all the points. Goofy is coming around, is not lead. And so for the first time in a long time, Namur is able to call, getting all the points, while Ghost Valley gets none of the points. Now, that's just for one jam. We still have a uh, 152 to 52 uh, score for Ghost Valley, and uh, that's some announcer math there. It's a 100-point difference. I can do that kind of math. That's easy for me. Don't forget to give us some likes, some hearts, um, uh, to, you know, ask me questions, uh, send me, you know, um, compliments. I like uh, compliments, um, but you can also tell me to go home. That's fine as well. <laughs> I won't, but uh, I, I like that people think that I should rest, but I will never do it. Um, so it looks like we have a bit of a, we have a bit of a timeout. Um, I have Pussy Panzerfaust who is actually indicating um, to the uh, scoreboard operators um, something. I don't know. They put four uh, little fingers up in the air, but I don't know what they really meant. But you know what? This is a good opportunity. I talked to you about the non-skating officials. and Let me give you the roster of those skating officials you see in the middle of the track. Um, there's Nat Safe for Work, Daniel Rerio, Merci Beaucoup, and it's actually Merci Beaucoup, which I really think is very cute, especially when you're near uh, or you're in a French-speaking uh, place. We've got at Magic M, Wonder Zebra, so Slow Fox, Beren Clau, who is from my home league, Antwerp Roller Derby, and Captain Robvius. Oh, Captain Robvius. Oh, you're so Robvius. That's so cute. Uh, love the derby names. Love all of the derby names. Still the best derby name of the weekend. You know, it's got to be Tamer. Your mom. 
looks like we're going to start jam number 17 off. We've got Sly Dog um, with uh, Barbarby in uh, the penalty box and the Spaniard, Paquito and Mirage out and Bombi who has earned lead jam, oh no, who has earned lead jammer, got a no pass, no penalty against Paquito, but had already earned that passage. So Sly Dog is trying to get through that slow pack. Like I told you, they're trying to slow it down. They're trying to make sure that what they can do is work to their strengths. Here in the front, we've got, um, We've got Loca Nurse, we've got Lon Roule, and we have um, Buzz Fighter. Um, you know, with a really strong, a really nice strong wall. Okay, I don't think Bombi realizes it, but Bombi is in there for their scoring pass. They have a lead jammer. Yep, they realize it. They decide to call it, and they have earned three points. So that's a 3-0 jam now. Okay, so that's two jams that NGB has won over um, Ghost Valley Roller Derby. So, you know, a pretty good, um, you know, couple jams there. And that could mean, you know, some momentum. I'm not saying, you know, they're going to be able to come back um, 100 points or actually 97 points now. Um, but, you know, still, it's a, it, there's nine minutes in the game. You never know what's going to happen. I do like to see that they've, you know, uh, gotten themselves into a rhythm and been able to put together a wall that is working for them. So, and that's probably why Cuddy Shark was able to get Lee Jammer here. And uh, Kaka Welt is coming around fast on his heels. Uh, there's um, a, a, a bunch of people in the box, so uh, it looks like Cuddy Shark is going to go into the back of the pack, earn a point or two, and call it off. And as I'm looking, we have, um, okay, you know what, Jammer Refs, uh, it looks almost like you have the same, okay, the white one. So the white one, I believe that would be Ghost Valley has earned uh, three points, or Namur Roller Derby has earned three points and Ghost Valley has earned two. Sorry, I'm unable to tell the difference between the two uh, different hands. Um, and I think that might kind of be the issue with the scorekeepers as well, is when those hands go up, there's a bit of a reflection on the wrist guard of one of the jam refs. And so maybe it looks white, maybe it looks black. I don't know. Um, I'm glad I don't have to score keep. I get to just look at the screen and go, okay, it's 3-2. Uh, as you know, I normally keep stats, but because I'm by myself, I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> well, I mean, I did it earlier, but I'm not going to do that for this particular game. We're just going to go through and let it ride. So uh, 154 to 58. Uh, Namur Roller Derby did win that jam technically because they got one point more than their opponent. Um, so, you know, that 97 point difference is lowered to 96. It's not bad. Um, you know, if you can just, you know, pick points up one at a time, especially if what you're going to do at the end of this game is play your best game because that's what you want to do because it's more fun, uh, then I, I encourage it. That's what we want uh, want to see here. We want to see good roller derby. We've got uh, Mirage and number nine. 977 Paquito, who are by themselves playing defense. Um, we see some offense being played for Blitz. Blitz coming out the front, giving a big hit to 977 Paquito and earning lead. And then we have Dawal, who is the last line of defense against Goofy, slows him down just enough to be able to make sure that Blitz is able to go through and get some points. But the other one has gotten points too because there was that great inside apex jump. And so that's 4-4. Four, four. That was a really fast and fancy jam, pretty fancy. Now I have to say that there was a lot of falling there and I don't like to see that. I don't like to see the falling and I also don't like to see the heads hit the floor. I hope that um, everybody is okay. We take concussion very seriously in this game and uh, because you know we hit each other so much, we need to make sure that it, anytime somebody's head hits the ground that we're making sure that they didn't sustain any sort of injury. I've got Bombi and uh, Kaka Welt uh, for the two teams uh, coming up and uh, Kaka Welt has gone to the box uh, for some sort of penalty. I can't tell you what, but that gives Bombi full offense to, to try and get out and um, maybe get lead. They're getting uh, hit pretty well by number one, four, Barbarbi, uh, 
Uh, number eight, Fraca, is also holding them back. I've got some offense being played by everyone. It seems to be a bit chaotic, but no, it looks like that wall has been able to reform. And as the wall reforms just as quickly, we've got uh, NGB trying to come in and deform it. So we've got reformation, deformation. Looks like they killed the penalty, though. That's what's most important. So Kakia Wealth comes back in on the inside, receives an offense from Barbarbi. Um, Barbarbi will go to the block, uh, to the box for it. He doesn't look very happy about it, but he went. You know, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't give a nasty look to the referee, but he didn't look necessarily happy about it. But so that means that we've got lead jammer for Kekia Welt, and they're now coming in for their scoring pass. At the same time, look, we have had a oh no. Uh, yeah, we have something going on. So basically, a, a star was passed to L'Enroule. The thing is, is that L'Enroule's laces came on lace, and L'Enroule cannot skate like that. It is too dangerous, so they have to come off the track. They have to fix their equipment, and then they can go back on the track because the last thing they want to do is try and skate with uh, laces in their skates. I mean, they could really hurt themselves badly. So Kekia Welt has now done a second scoring pass. Um, and uh, Long Roule has the star and is trying to get um, the, uh, um, not the, is now in for, I believe, the scoring pass. I don't believe they, I, I think they got the initial. So, um, yeah, they did get their initial pass. And so now we have, um, you know, uh, Kekia Wattel. You know what? I have been saying the wrong thing. It's Ke it's Kekia Welt on my um, sheet right here. But as I look at the jersey of that skater, it looks like it's Kekia Wattel. And Kekia Wattel, that makes more sense to me because it sounds like, um, you know, some it's like a Texelkwattel or, a, you know, some sort of weird Aztec name. <laughs> And so that makes just a little bit more sense to me. Oh, well, we'll see. You know, I'm probably wrong, but it doesn't matter. Uh, 170 to 62. Now we've got uh, Cuddy Shark coming out the front, trying to get through the inside, get through the Spaniard. 857 is able to earn lead. No lead for Sly Dog, but Sly Dog is right on their heels, and so they decide to call it. But Sly Dog is like, no, let's keep racing around. Because <laughs> it is really fun when you've got two jammers who are just neck and neck, and you try and see if one of them can score before the other one, and if you can call it off with precision. So I know that that's a lot of fun, and I'm sorry that they didn't get to do it. But, I mean, they did, you know, and that's the whole point. They're all out here to have a good time. And you know what? When you're having fun, that's when you play your best derby, which is, is and you know, it, it's the whole point. I mean, it's a game. Blitz getting an excellent offense on that 2-2 two -two from the inside. Racing around, and we've got Goofy getting, you know, uh, a really uh, good defense from Wachu Pichu, unfortunately. Wachu Pichu also on the ground, but then Blitz comes around scoring pass. We've got Goofy coming around for his scoring pass. So Blitz is like, I got all the points, I'm going to call it off. That was a super successful jam for NGB, and I hope, and they all look quite proud of themselves, as a matter of fact. So I'm very happy for them because they're very happy, and that's the whole point. Uh, it does look like they're. Um, their box has gotten a little smaller, um, but it, um, but fortunately we haven't had any other um, we haven't had any other foul outs on NGB's side. I'm just going to take a look over here at our penalty board. Ghost Valley Roller Derby. We've got six. We've got five. But it looks like everything's okay. And it yeah, it does look like Barbarbi did pick up a uh, penalty uh, as a captain. You know, um, and if we look over at the penalty board for Namur Roller Derby, it's the same situation as before. Wachu Pichu on six penalties. The foul out for the human flag. Monsieur Odin is on five again as i told you that's danger zone but it's not that big a deal because we are three minutes and 46 seconds for the rest of the game if he's on five penalties it's still possible that he could you know he could get zero penalties uh yeah this is really fun so Olorul has decided to do some um headstands on the track you know for the uh pleasure of the uh, the spectators here in our beautiful hall in uh, Tabura. Again, we'd like to thank the 
city of Namur for their sponsorship of this beautiful hall and, and, and this wonderful occasion to get all of us together and to just have a great time. All right, another 2-2 two, two for NGB. They see that it's working. They've decided to keep doing it. I've got Mirage doing a really good offense at the front. So Kakawatl is able to get through number 8884 eight, eight, lead jam. I still have Bambi kind of struggling at the back, has taken the cover off. Kakawatl doing a bit of juking in and then out. Um, there's a bit of a good defense here, but Kakawatl is able to keep their feet underneath him, is able to keep his feet underneath himself and get through on the inside. Looks like we've had a really big hit on the uh, on the inside. I've got a skater on the ground and I also have a lot of um, I also have a lot of whistles being whistled. So that means that, you know, somebody is going to the penalty box. I'm not sure. So there we have Monsieur Odin, who is going to the penalty box. We also have um, uh, two skaters, the Spaniard and number uh, 222, just in case, who are in the penalty box for Ghost Valley. Kakawatl is in the front trying to get their scoring pass, pushing through um, and now a uh, two wall that has bridged out for NGB. Bambi has put their um, helmet cover back back on and is trying to make it out and they do eventually make it out and that's just because Mimi is able to hit th hit them but um, uh, still goes out himself and so that means that Bambi gets through with a no pass no penalty and they're uh, starting to score so now if they can score against one yep they score against all of them because we had uh, about three blockers in um, uh, in the penalty box now Kakawatzel is turning around looks like they're going to play a little bit of defense and it looks like Bambi is like yeah that sounds like fun let's do it jukes around them <laughs> and is able to score what looks to me like one more point I don't know it's not up to me no it looks like that zero points uh, so there's four points for Namur Roller Derby and eight points for Ghost Valley Roller Derby it's very confusing because it seems to me yeah that uh, the uh, jammer ref with the white on their um, on their uh, wrist guard is actually showing points for Namur uh, I can't I can't be sure actually and, and that may have caused some confusion. We're looking at the scores right now. Um, it's 12 points actually for Ghost Valley and eight for Namur. So I'm kind of trying to figure this out whether or not the scores are okay. Um, I think also the penalty box is trying to make sure that they have the correct penalty for everybody. We saw that Monsieur Odin did go to the box one more time. So that'd be six penalties out of the seven that he's allowed to get. But again, we're at one minute 29 from the end of the game so you know for me that's still okay you know there are a lot of people who don't want you to be on six but you know it, it kind of depends um, how uh, instrumental you are we have Sly Dog and um, uh, Cuddy Shark who are uh, both on the track Sly Dog making it out as lead jammer but come, Cuddy Shark coming around fast and we have a huge offense played by 117 but unfortunately that offense may have been illegal no it looks like it was 3210 vintage who actually did something naughty and will, go, will be going to the box so NGB is going to have to get into position to try and defend the um, and, and was unable to do so. Um, Cuddy Shark tries to get in, maybe steal a point or two. It's unknown whether or not that was successful, but we knew though, do know that Cuddy Shark got all of the points. Um, uh, the points being shown right now are from the previous jam, so I can't really tell you much about it. It looks to me like it was 4-0, uh, but that's just my cursory reading from, you know, over here. I am not, uh, you know actually taking care of the scoreboard or uh, watching the jam refs, you know, as closely as say a score people would. All right, we have Goofy and Blitz together on the track. Uh, Goofy trying to get through Orvalhalla and um, uh, Luca Nurse. And, and the thing is, is that Orvalhalla and Luca Nurse are doing a really good job along with Monsieur Odin at, um, <laughs> at playing defense. Orvalhalla tries to push Monsieur Odin into the opposing jammer and just pushes him directly to the floor. Meanwhile, Blitz is coming in, scoring points, and I believe will be trying to uh, outscore Goofy. No, it looks like he is going to keep on playing. He's going to have confidence in his teammates that they will be able to hold Goofy for uh, whatever amount of time is necessary so that Blitz can 
come and pirouette through with some really fancy footwork. You gotta love that. Blitz is really doing some fun stuff. It almost looks like roller dance. And you know what? That's an extra scoring pass on Goofy. And that's because that defense is going just as hard as they possibly can. And it looks to me like the decision has been made to run this jam. No, okay, it's the end of the game. So Blitz decides to call it off, scores 12. To Goofy's four points, a beautiful last jam. I love it. I love those kind of jams. I love to see, you know, the game really being played as hard as it possibly can be played to the very, very end. And that's exactly what these two teams did. They poured it all out on the track. It was lovely. Um, yeah, Roy, yeah, he got a foul out in the first half. Yes, he did, Kay. And uh, Amsterdam training attendance. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about that, but you know, that's gonna have to be um, between you because I don't think that's for us. Regardless, we're really happy that you were interacting on the feed, that you were interacting with me as you can hear. My voice is not doing so great. It's not as good as it was yesterday. It's definitely not as good as it was this morning. But I had a great time announcing this game, the score of which is now final 194-290 um, for Ghost Valley Roller Derby from Lausanne and Tonon les Bains. Um, again, you know, just all friends out here, friends of mine, friends of each other. Um, everyone looked like they had a really great time, and it was really wonderful to be able to show you some um, MRD. DA rules roller derby.